15th of May 1956, a special child was born. His parents, Acharya Ratnanand and his wife, Vishalakshi, named this boy Ravi Shankar. When he was four years old, much before he could learn to read or write, he recited verses from the Bhagavad Gita. When he was six years old, he was often found in deep meditation. He showed keen interest in the Vedas and thus began his Vedic studies under his first teacher, Pandit Sudhakar Chaturvedi. When he was in school, little Guruji would often tell his friends, all over the world people are waiting for me and one day I will visit them. But most of them would tease and laugh at him. They also went to an extent of writing London on the toilet door. Little did anyone know that not just London, but people from more than 150 nations were waiting for him. In 1973, from St. Joseph's College, Bangalore, he received a bachelor's degree in physics. After his graduation in 1977, this young man, with a sincere urge to make a difference in this world, started to travel widely. During the years of his travel, he spent some time with Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. In 1982, in a place a little away from Bangalore called Shimoga, Guruji took a 10-day silence period. It was during this time the most miraculous gift to mankind, an immensely sacred and special technique, the Sudarshan Kriya, was revealed to him. Legend says, when he came out of that room, he held Pitaji's hand and said, Come, come, we have a lot of work to do. The first course, he thought, was in Shimoga, near the beautiful Joke Falls, where people experienced the magic of Sudarshan Kriya. His communication with the participants happened through silence. And when he spoke, many felt that they had already heard what he had to say. After the first course, a trickle of people started coming to Guruji to seek the knowledge. And he travelled extensively to teach and impart the knowledge to more and more people all around the country and the world. Soon, the name Art of Living was adopted. The trickle started to increase and Pitaji's house couldn't accommodate them anymore. Guruji then decided to build an ashram where people from all over the world could come, meditate, serve, sing and just be in his presence. In 1985, Guruji, Pitaji and few others were driving down Kanakpura Road, Bangalore in search of land for the ashram. Though there was a lot of picturesque land much closer to the city available, Guruji insisted that they keep driving. Finally, he asked for the car to stop exactly where the main gate is this day and started walking through the middle of a barren land with nothing but rocks and stones. He walked and reached the top of a hill, looked around, meditated and said, this will be our ashram. People with him flabbergasted, criticized the choice of the place, but he insisted. That place is none other than our Sumeru Mantap. The first building that was built in our ashram was Narayana. And this was where the first Sudarshan Kriya tape was recorded. Then after some time came the first official abode of Guruji, Shakti Kutir. The ashram, which was a barren land with huge rocks and stones, where any kind of growth 
seemed impossible. There was not a single bird here. And I was thinking, hey, how come? Not even a sparrow, no pigeon. Means what is this place? And that was 94, beginning of 94. And today we have more than 50 varieties of birds here, you know. The biodiversity that has come up here. So human beings are not the only ones who grow here. Uh, this is a place where life grows. Shram means effort and ashram means a place where things work effortlessly. So it's as simple as that. Today, the ashram is paradise and over the years, many more features and buildings have come up. Ganga Kutir, the new kitchen, beautiful garden Radha Kunj, situated right next to a serene lake. The Vedagma, the artistic amphitheater, and right in front of it, the majestic four story gem of a meditation hall, Vishalakshi Mantap, named after Guruji's mother. Right from the beginning, Guruji started to create teachers who traveled all over the world, spreading the knowledge of the art of living, touching and transforming the lives of millions of people. In Mumbai, the first big satsang of 150 people was organized for Guruji in 1992. In less than two years, this gathering of 150 people grew so big that there was no hall left in Bombay that could accommodate the crowd clamoring to meet their beloved Guruji. In February 2006, the Art of Living celebrated its Silver Jubilee, which was marked by a gathering of 2.5 million people, the only one of its kind. A grand symphony of more than a thousand sitar maestros, Brahmanand in Noida, an enthralling symphony of more than 2,500 Hindustani classical vocalists, Antarnad in Pune, and Punarnava the performance of 1200 Mohini Atam dancers in Kerala marked the unique grandness of the art of living. Through the years, the art of living has grown unfathomably in its magnitude through Guruji's grace and your commitment. An entire bouquet of courses are taught by 10,000 dynamic teachers in 151 countries across the globe touching people through a wide spectrum from slum dwellers to CEOs, prison inmates to top scientists, from politicians to housewives, from village farmers to urban youth. We have grown from a small Veda school to a huge multifaceted organization spanning the entire globe from a rocky barren land to a beautiful green paradise, from a gentle trickle to a flood of millions. And this is just the beginning.